Hey, y'all. Made some pretty good progress and really happy with where the title cards are right now for being able to give us a little animation coming in and being able to just spell out words and have them show up that we did in part one. This is going to be another design video where don't feel like you need to build along with this because it's going to be all over the place and I'm probably going to put things up and then take them down as I try and figure out what I'm going to do. This is just the design aspect of it. So this is just kind of following along if you want to see how I think through these projects. So what I want to do now, I would like to do a few different things. One, I've realized that the way that I want to do these a little bit is I want to have like a, a part number or part list up here, part list, part name. What I want to have up here is a part identifier. So like these videos are probably going to be broken down into two parts for the most part, a, a part one, which is the design aspect and a part two, which is a build. And so what I think I want to do is have part one design, part two design show up down here underneath the actual title itself. And the other trick that I want to do is I don't actually think I'm going to want to have the, like, I like this stuff coming in and I want that as an option where it does all the like quick loop things. But really what I want to do to start with is just have it show up. So we're just going to start right there and change this to a zero. And I think, yeah, now when I click on it, if I click stop, well, D shows up, but I don't care about that. It just gives me the title. So this will just give me the title card. So that's cool. Now, for the other words that I want to add on here, what I want to do is use different uh, letter sprites. And I went ahead and made two other packages here that I can throw in the backpack that you can use if you've logged into the sprite site or sorry, into the, if you've logged into the scratch site. So I've got these glow letters and I've got these green letters. And I'm going to do basically the same thing, but we're going to end up probably tweaking some things around a little bit as we work through this. So I hope what I can do, oh, actually, you know what, before I do that, so I'm, and again, this is going to be lean kind of thinking through these things. Like I've got some ideas about what to do, but this is going to be very kind of free flowing about how, I, how I'm actually doing the work to make this stuff happen. This is a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm going to take these back out for a second because there's another aspect here that I want to deal with that I already know that I need to deal with, which is I want to change these letter size and these letter spacings so that they actually go to each of the type of letters. So like if I add in, I'm gonna add them back in now, the, okay, we already, there you go, ta-da, they're there, they're back. If we add in the glow letter and the green letter, if this just says letter spacing for my variable name or letter size, that doesn't tell me which one of these letters that actually is. So I wanna name this to block letter and we'll end up renaming variables as we go through this to deal with the fact that like block letters are gonna need to have their own lines Glow letters are going to need to have their own lines and green letters are going to have their own lines. Because if we, if we try to use the same variable for all three of them, they just overwrite each other and we need to have them have a little bit of separation. So first thing I want to do now is instead of, so like right here, doo -doo 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 -doo. so like right here, I'm setting the current left, right, and the current up, down, and the current left, right, and the current up, down. I'm actually going to change those variable names to be X and Y. I'm more familiar with X and Y based off my other programming stuff. I was going to try and use left and right and up and down to make it a little bit easier to get used to. At least that was my thought. But like X and Y is what these things are called. It's literally that right here and right here. And it's going to take a little getting used to. It, it, it took me a little while to get my head around it. But once I got my head around it, I just think about these things as X and as Y. So X is moving left and right. Y is moving up and down. And so, so instead of calling them current left, left, right, and up, down, we're actually going to call them um, the names that they actually are, which is going to be current. So left, right is X, and up, down, we're going to rename to Y. And while we're doing that, what we really want to do is do block letter, current Y, and current X becomes block letter. Rename this block letter, current X. And a couple more renames while we're at it, because we know we want to do this. This will be block. BLO block letter size and rename block letter spacing. Block letter spacing. It was really nice that Scratch did for us is it actually just renamed all those variables. So we need rename re we rename them over here, it renamed them everywhere else for us. And that's great. So there's another trick here that I think I, I think that I want to do, which is so X X is left, right, Y is up down. And I'm setting both of those values right here. But one of the things that I ended up doing or that I think I want to do, at least to start with, is I don't want to have, I'm going to hide these, boop, and boop. I, I want these lines, I want these first words to all be lined up. So I've got this one shifted over, 
because I, I can move, I can change this X value here. I'm going to make it like a hundred to make it go really far to decide where we start writing that word. But I kind of don't want to have to make that decision every time. I kind of want to only make that decision once and just have the things lined up. So right here for block letter current X, this is 160, which is where we start with, which if we do this at 160, they should be pretty close. Yeah. So the W is a little bit bigger letter than H. So it ends up being over to the side a little bit, but I'm fine with that. That works just fine. And the reason I went through that is now if I added five more lines, I would have to, right now I'd have to keep adding this current X every time. But what I can do is not have to do that. Because if I take this out and I take this out and we do this, because I was setting the value to the value that it already was, doesn't change anything. Doesn't like mess with it. Ooh, but here's what's going to happen. It's going to keep going because it like this is setting the X here. Oh, I guess we do need to set that. But here's what we can do. Check this out. So I do need to have this reset in here, but I don't have to manually type the number. So if I want to shift everything over from 160 to negative 100, let's say, picking a random number, negative 100, I had to change that in two different places, which isn't a huge deal. But if I had three more of these, so if I take this over here and I duplicate this, and I duplicate this, and we paste this, and this, and this, it's just gonna say world a bunch. And what we need to do to make this demo actually work. So here's minus 30, let's make this minus 80, and let's make this minus 120, minus 130. So they're gonna, they're gonna stack on top of each other, but here's the point to look at. All of these lines, all these, all these letters are kind of lined up the same thing. If I wanna move all of them, I have to change them all. So I wanna go to 160, I wanna go to 160, I wanna go to 160, minus 160. And it's one of the tricks with this is it's also really easy for me to mess this up, right? Because if I have to do something over and over again, computers are really good at that. Humans are less good at that, which is cool. That's one of the things that makes us great. Every now and then, it's kind of a pain to have to go through and do that. So check this out. This is what we can do. I can make a new variable. And what we can do, what do we want to call this? We, we can call this block letter x start. And if we take block letter, and now we're going to take, you know what we should do? Hmm, let's see. What's a good way to do this? I kind, of want to, I kind of want to move some stuff around in a second, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. We're going to take this block letter x start, and we're going to make it one, minus 160, which is the number that we currently have in all these spots. Because I, I do need this line to be here, but what I can do now is drop this variable. So I'm putting a variable inside of a variable. x start, block letter, x start block letter x start. So now if I refresh everything, it should look the same, looks the same. But if I change it to, uh, let's just go minus, I don't know, 60 now, all of my lines moved. So because I'm setting each, I'm, I'm only setting it one time now, and all the rest of the times that I set the other variable, the block letter current x, it picks up this variable that does, it stays unchanged for uh, block letter start x, x start. You know, I'm going I'm to switch that too. We're going we're gonna to make some other changes here, make it a little bit easier for my head to get around what's happening here, which is we're going to rename this variable as block letter X current instead of current X. And the reason I like that is because now block letter X current and block letter X start are next to each other alphabetically. Do the same thing for Y, which we aren't really, really using yet, but we will in a little bit. Okay. So that lets me, that, that gives me a lot more control over how to like position these things. So if I run this, click this, all the things move for me. And that's, that's really what a bunch of, of the way that I think about programming is, is like, how can I spend some amount of effort so that the next time I do something, I only have to do it once instead of four times. So I only have to change this variable in one place, so minus 20, instead of what I had to do earlier, which was change it here and here and here and here. It's not like a huge deal, but also... It's nicer, and I'm, let, I'm a lot less likely, to, lot, and I'm a lot less likely to mess it up if I only have to change it in one place. So let's go back to 180 and run this. Nice. Now I want to add in a similar feature to moving the letters step by step by step to do the same thing for the lines. Because right now with the lines, I'm manually putting in where I want to start each line number. So I start at. Oh, let's see, let y current is 70, and then we go to minus 30, 
and then we go to minus 80, and then we go to minus 130. But I have to set each one of those each time. Same thing, manual. But if we do this and make a new variable here called clock letter y start, I think I actually, yeah, it's fine. I, was, I couldn't figure out if I was going to make it for only this letter or for all the other ones or whatever, but whatever. It's, this is fine the way it is. I'll have to look and see if there actually makes a difference. Don't know the answer to that. Now, one more time. Set block letter X. Now we're going to do Y start. This is going to be 70, which is what we have down here. You know, I think I'm going to do one other thing here. And, and the thing that I'm, I'm thinking of right now is some of this is like set up before we actually run the program. And then some of it is actually the program running. And I kind of want those two things to be separated a little bit. So all I'm going to do to make that happen, I think, is I'm going to make a custom block here, which we're going to call, I'm going to call it main, which is a word that actually gets used a decent amount with other computer languages. Because what we can do is I can call these setup things here and make a pretty good distinction between what I want to have for setup and then what I want to have for all of the actual things that get run. So I'm just going to move this over here. And then we're going to take main and we're going to put it here. And we should see the exact same thing happen. Because all we did was like, this is basically like a bridge between here and here. So we just stepped across the bridge. We did the thing. We just moved it over there. You can also do that to make it easier to find pieces of code. But let's see what else we want to do. So the setup stuff, the stuff that isn't going to need to change between each one of these, also includes the block letter size and the block letter spacing. So let's move those over there. Glide time also doesn't need to change. Like this is all setup stuff. This is what we do when we're defining how we want to have things happen. And now this looks a little bit like what we're kind of expecting or what I would expect to have happen where we make a change or sorry, we, we make some updates to those variables and then we print some letters out and we make some updates to those variables and we print some letters out. Yeah, I like this. This feels cleaner to me in terms of like this stuff when it was all combined was mushing together a little bit and it was harder for me to keep track of what was what but now I know that like, I'm just gonna change these variables and it's gonna affect what happens over here. And we're gonna run this this way. So the first thing we wanna do is start using this variable for block letter y start. And we're gonna do the similar thing we did earlier, which is we're gonna take block letter y start, which we don't need to see, and put it right here. So let's just see what happens if we run that. Oh, it was, it was already 70 and we had the number 70 in there, so it's the same thing. Now here is where we'll see a little bit of a difference where for this, instead of manually setting block letter Y current, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna change block letter Y current to minus, I'm just gonna go with 60 right now. I'm just, uh, we're guessing, we'll see what happens. I just wanna see if it changes. So that, that world definitely moved. And now if I do it as minus 90 or minus 90, whoop, cool. So now there's another aspect that we wanna do here which is, I, I know that this is the number that's addressing the thing that we wanna do. And I've got my start position, but if I just did this exact same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up, because we're gonna wanna, this is, this'll be part of the process. But remember, we're not gonna set it, we're actually just gonna update it. So we're gonna do this change again, and we'll do this to minus 90, whoops, minus 90, and come down here, same thing with this one, and then drop change in again. Oops, I don't think I changed the other one, I'll have to do that in a second. So this is Y minus 90. If we run that, I definitely did the wrong thing. Block letter size, that was the wrong one. Here's the one that we wanted to change. There we go, let's try this again. There we go. So now we're seeing the, the, the words move for us, but we didn't make a whole bunch of progress, seemingly, because I still had to type this number in by hand every time. So we set it up here and it's like minus 90, minus 90, minus 90. I've got to do that manually. But we can do the same thing we did here. Where we do this block letter spacing, we can make another variable. Lots of variables in this one. Block letter block line spacing. I'm gonna call it line spacing. Oh, let's call it Y. Yeah, let's call it Y spacing. It's lines, but like, this will help all the X's and the Y's line up with each other. Oops, let me rename it one more time. Block letter Y spacing. There we go. So now we're getting our Y's lining up here, right? So we've got our current, our spacing, our start, and then, oh, one more time. We're definitely gonna get it right this time. Block letter line spacing. No, 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 I'm sorry, backing up. I just deleted it. All right, rip, restore. Nope, that didn't work either. Okay, I just figured out how undo doesn't work. Okay, backing up for a second. Now we're gonna make this variable. So we're gonna make this variable again. So we're gonna make this variable. Block, letter, Y, spacing. Perfect. 
and we want to set that in our setup area. So block letter Y spacing. Yeah, we're going to change some names here. And this is a little bit all over the place in terms of this, this maybe is a little hard to follow because some of this is all in my head right now. Hopefully, as we get it kind of lined up, you'll see where I, how I'm kind of narrowing in on this, where I like seeing these Ys all lined up together because it gives me the start, the spacing, and the current. And then X has start and current, but I've got letter spacing up here. That's going to become X spacing in just a second. So it's this kind of process of going through and refining stuff over time to make it more and more make sense to you and hopefully whoever you're working with if you're working with somebody on a project, which also, by the way, can be you two weeks from now when you load the file back up. So here's block letter spacing. And we want to do this as minus 90, minus 90. And now if we grab this value, Y spacing here, here, and here. Okay, so if we run it, I think it's going to look the same. Cool, it looks the same. But we've gotten back to a point now where all I have to do is make a change in one place, which will make it, will overshoot it a little bit on purpose. But all of our letters and lines now moved. So this little section here controls all of our word spacing. And we don't have to really do too much with it other than just add the letters and do a couple resets in here. But those letters always pull back to these values, either setting them directly or doing a change dynamically to them. So that's, I, I, this, is, this, is, this is pretty slick. I'm, I'm really kind of impressed with Scratch and the ability to run this stuff. It's, this is very, very similar to the way that I would have built a program in some of the programming languages that I use. Ones like Python or Rust or JavaScript. The, like Scratch is no joke. The and, and I'm still finding new things with it and the same way that I find new things with even with languages that I've used for a long time where it's like, oh, cool, I didn't know it could do that. That's very slick. And this is one of those. Like putting having a variable being able to be assigned into a variable like this is is pretty is pretty hefty. That's pretty cool. So let's give this an actual number now of minus 50 and see if that's close. Nope. Oh, but yeah, we can check this out. Uh, oh, let's uh, let's do make that one other change. So we've got this X and letter size. So letter size is going to stay the same. I want to move letter size up. What I want to see happen here is this. I want to have letter size and I want X start, Y start, and I want X spacing, Y spacing. Just again, for the, the ease of looking at this stuff, that's going to be the easiest thing for me to kind of process through. So here's letter spacing, which we want to rename this to letter x x spacing and again like also super cool that scratch just updates all the variables for you all over the place not all programming setups do that believe me because it's easy to spend a bunch of time trying to do that <laughs> okay so run it again nothing's changing because we didn't change any numbers but now we have letter size so i'm going to bring the letter size down a little bit right this is the whole point of doing this is i can make the letters smaller i want to make a let's go with like 120 and then letter X, letter start. So X is the left, right. That seems that I'm kind of okay with that, but I want them to be higher. So this is starting at 70. So I'm going to go to like 130 and it should move up. That's a little too high. Bring it down a little bit. 110. Pretty good. Now, X spacing looks a little, uh, let me finish. Let me fix the Y spacing first so I can see the letters. Literally. So right now it's at minus 50. Let's make that minus 80. I'm just guessing right now. We'll see what happens. Hmm, that's not bad. Okay, cool. And then the X spacing, the spacing in between the letters, the left-right spacing, is a little too much. So I'm going to bring this down to uh, 58. Works great. All right. Smaller, a little smaller, 110. And this is where you get to just do some design work and just kind of tweak things down a little bit. Uh, 180, we'll go 170, minus 170. And Y spacing looks a little, we'll bring it down to minus 70. I like it. Very cool. Now, Okay. I'm really happy with where this is. I'm going to go ahead and save this because I think this is a good place to save. I'm going to make one other change here. And I don't know if we're going to see a giant effect of it or not, but it may make a little bit of a switch. So right now the W is behind the O. None of the other letters are really overlap. None of the other, none of the other letters are really overlapping, but that one is a little bit. And so I think if after I make the clone... I go into look and say, go to back layer. That'll make the W show up. Yeah. 
the hello is sitting on top of the world a little bit now, but I like I like this letter. Okay, one more one more minor change here, and I think we're going to be in pretty good shape for this section. So let's add a little bit more space to our Y spacing. Go back up to 80. Hello world. There you go. And then, yeah, so like right now it's all shifted. I just realized it's all shifted over to the left because I've been staring at it from the other side of the monitor. And I don't like that. So uh, we'll just make this, I don't know, minus 140 and get it kind of centered up. Not always centered. One more time. One, two, three. Not bad. So that's in pretty good shape. This is this is not bad at all. And I'll I'll pull up as we get finished through this project a little bit, I'll pull up some of the earlier versions of this so we can take a look at and see how much was happening with them versus how much we have now and how going through some of this refinement of some of these codes and moving things into variables has let us make a lot easier things to look at because all this Hello World stuff is all just built directly off of this right now. And I think there's even ways to make it even easier and lighter and nicer on the eyes kind of thing. But we'll get into those in future sessions. For now, I think we're in a pretty good stopping place. So have a good one. We'll do it again soon. And until then, take kind, uh, until then, be, until then, be kind and take care.